Hello students, today we're going to learn how to predict offspring genotype and phenotype. So we're going to find out what the combinations are of the developing child and also what its possible you know, physical features. In other words, phenotype is going to be. Just remember these rules and you can always think about this picture. Uh, first thing we have to do to figure out what a baby is going to look like, well we have to know, number one, what is the parent genotype? In other words, what is mom's um, instructions in her in her body cells right then what are dads in his body cells but then we know that they have to make the sperm and the egg so now that we know their body cell genotype we can figure out through meiosis what mom's uh, egg cell genotype will be and then what dad's sperm cell genotype will be what's the next step well now you have the egg and the sperm we know what what their combinations are what do we do? What do you think we do? Well, we get mom, the egg, and the sperm to meet. And that's so we fertilize the egg with the sperm. And now we're going to know what the offspring genotype will be. So remember these steps. And uh, so first we know the mom and the dads. We then go through meiosis to figure out their sperm and the egg. Now that we know the sperm and the egg, fertilize them together. And then we'll figure out the, the zygote genotype. Okay, so remember that. Three steps. All right, so first, before we start, we need to know genes versus alleles. I have a cell here, and of course, you have the nucleus and the chromosomes. Look at the chromosomes all over the place, like X's. Well, what is a chromosome? If we go back, um, well, remember, they're, they're uh, connected by the centromere, and so this whole thing is one chromosome with two chromatids. Um, these two sister chromatids, what they call them, they're identical. So you have one DNA molecule here and another DNA molecule here, and they're identical. Remember, they had to go through S phase where you got one and you copied it all the way, and now you got two identical stuck at the chromatid, at the centromere, sorry. So what is this? It's really DNA wrapped around tightly around these proteins called histone proteins. And the DNA is wound and wound up tightly, tightly, and they finally appear like this at the beginning of mitosis or meiosis, which is prophase. That's when you can start seeing them like this. Otherwise, they're just spread out like chromatin. And if you look carefully at the DNA molecule, and um, what we have here are genes. These are just sections of DNA. So here's a gene. It's the distance from here to here, and it has some information about your height. So genes have information about your, your traits. And they're really instructions to build proteins. And so that, that's really what it is. That's the magic behind DNA. DNA has instructions called genes to build specific proteins. And those proteins are the ones that act in your body and, and cause some kind of action, thus creating the appearance of your traits, which is building your heart, you know, your eye color, your skin, um, building the rest of your body and all the other wonderful traits we have. So here's a height gene, face, uh, face, face uh, shape gene, and eye color gene. Now let's go ahead and look at a homologous pair of chromosomes. Let's call this pair number one, which you know in a karyotype is the tallest pair, and then they go smaller and smaller, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 23. So let's just look at pair number one. Let's pretend that pair number one has our eye color information at about this gene location. They call it they call it a locus. In other words, location. Okay, that's the locus or location right there where that gene is, that piece of DNA. Okay, so right here, let's call this the one from mom and then the one from dad. Well, on the one from mom, she's carrying uh, the eye color gene, but, but which one? We need to know what specific one. And so when we talk about specific genes or the different forms of the gene, we're actually talking now about alleles, which are genes but getting more specific, right? So here we have uh, mom is carrying the brown, the brown eye color allele, and dad is carrying the green eye color allele. So again, that's what um, the difference between genes and alleles are. Gene is pretty much the category. It's very general. And then alleles get more specific. Here's another example. What if I said uh, face shape? Well, face, face shape would be the gene. The alleles would be round face and um, square face. Or skin color. Well, maybe uh, the alleles would be light, um, tan, dark. There you go. There's three alleles. So just get the difference between those. Next thing. Okay, so how do we find the gamete genotypes? Well, we said we first need to know what the parent genotypes are and then figure out what they make. Here we're referring to a female. So what is she going to make through meiosis? Well, she's going to make 
egg cells, right? So here we start with the parent genotype. We know it's diploid because it's in a body cell. Diploid cells are body cells. Uh, they're, they're, and the sex cells are haploid. So here we have a body cell, and this is in the ovaries, and it's going to go through meiosis. So here's metaphase one. They line up homologous pairs, and then remember the law of segregation. This one's going to go to this side, and the other one's going to go to the other side. So they leave each other. Very sad, right? But they go to different cells. And so here you have the gene for tall. If from the dad, it's on this other uh, cell, and the one from mom is on that side. And so what do you get? Well, you get meiosis part two, remember? And so the chromatids finally break at the centromere. And you're going to get, again, tall here, tall here, uh, short here, short here. So really, how many combinations do you get? Well, count them. Well, there's I know there's four cells, right? Because you make four um, sex cells in meiosis. But if you really look at the combinations, there's only two, tall, short. So this is now the simplified way of looking at it looking at it and this is how we're gonna look at it but I want you to understand the long way and and really where this resulted from meiosis so now focus here all you have to do is segregate them and so these are easy problems you'll get so this is obviously a body cell and I'll ask you on a test maybe you know what what are the possible uh, genotypes of the gametes well um, if you have big T, little t, all you do is segregate them. So there you go, big T, and then this one goes over there. You don't put them together. You don't put big T and little t over here. Why? Because they segregate. If you were to do that, that means that's non-disjunction, and you'd get something like trisomy at the end when it gets fertilized. But here you go. That's pretty much a simple problem. But remember where it resulted from, this problem, this, this uh, diagram right here shows it. Okay, let's do some practice problems. Practice. Okay, so figure out the gamete or sex cell genotypes from these parent genotypes. So these are the parents. Obviously, they're diploids, so they're body cells. Okay, so let's say, for example, here we go. We have this one, big T, big T. So what would you do? Well, just remember you segregate them. So I'll let you think about it. Practice it. Pause the video right now. And when you're ready, um, press resume or, or continue the video to see your answers. So try it right now. Okay, so how did you do? Let's see, check your work. Very easy, right? All you do is separate them. Um, again, you're probably wondering, wait, aren't we making sex cells? Where are the sperm? Well, I would tell you, um, but if I would say maybe these two are, are in the body, and so you would put little tails here, right? Make sense? So it can be egg cells or sperm cells, depending on which body we're talking about, male or female. All right, now get ready for this. Now we're going to do the same thing. Um, before I talked about one gene, now we're going to do two genes, and these are going to be on different chromosomes, okay? So it's not that complicated, but watch. So here we have, we're going to say eye color, and we're still going to keep height over here. So I have two homologous chromosomes. Let's say that the blue represents male, and the yellow represents female. Okay, so I have here, these line up. Uh, again, these are in pairs, so they line up, and they're going to separate this way. Usually we see them separate that way. It doesn't matter. But um, in this case, they're lined up this way, so it makes sense they're going to separate into both sides. And so what do we get? Well, if they lined up in this arrangement, remember the law of independent assortment means that whatever these do is independent of whatever these do. Because as long as they're in pairs, they can go on either side. It's just random how they line up. And so what we get is we're going to see these segregate. And these will go to that side, and these two will go this side. And what do we get? Little b, little t, big b, big t down here. And then the chromatids separate. And so what do we get? Again, continuing that, we have big b, big t, big b, big t. Okay, so that's really one total combination. And little b, little t, right? And so that was that's the combination of, of gametes or sex cells that we make when they line up in this way. But they could have lined up in another way. So here, again, it's this form. But now if you compare this arrangement... Remember the dad was on, on, on the bottom side and the, and the mom was on the top side here. But now we flip it around where it's the other way around. So now look at this formation. You see how that's different from over there? Because they line up in a different arrangement. That's law of independent assortment. Then you proceed with the law of segregation, separate these chromosome pairs, and big B, little t down here, little b, big t. You notice how we're getting something a little bit different. So what's our result? Well, we get big B, little t, same thing here, right? And then little b, little, uh, little b, big t, which is different here. So in reality, here we got one combination. Here's another one, three and four. 
and you do get four cells, but in reality we get four possible combinations. So how do we do this? Well, this is a summary of this whole process here. We're going to be looking at these and doing problems like this. I show you this so you can understand where all this came from. And it had to do with segregation and the whole process of meiosis, basically. Now, I'm going to show you a quicker way to do this instead of having to draw all this on a test. This is a simplified way. And we use this, it's called the FOIL method. You only do this for whenever you have two genes. Uh, again, like eye color here and height. And really it comes out to like four alleles. Um, you only do this for this. The only time you segregate is when you have one gene, like the easier problems that we were doing earlier. So here we go. These are some sample problems, and I'm going to take you to this uh, software program I call uh, Paintbrush so that I, we can work some problems together. Okay, so here we go. So we have big A, little A, big B, little B. So the easy way to do this is just um, I like to underline the first one, and that's big A. So I'm going to write that down, big A. Okay, that's my first possible one. But I know I have to have something else because I can't just have this information. I have to have information from here. I know that these segregate, so I can't have big A and little a unless I want Down syndrome or a uh, syndrome like that where I carry an extra chromosome. But I, I can have big A and big B, so I'm going to write that down. Big A, and this is hard to do because I'm using the little mouse thing. All right, but then I can have, um, I already did big A, big B. Remember, I can't have big A, little a, but then I can have big A, and you guessed it, little b. Notice I'm going left to right, just like in foil. Keep everything organized and nicely. Big A and little b. Okay, cool. Now, I'm already finished with all the possible combinations with big A first. So now, I move on to the next letter, little a. I can't have little a, big A, because a lot of segregation, but I can have little a, big b. Little a and big b. This is tough here. Got it. Okay, and then I already did that one. So now I can have little a and little b. So little a and little b. Okay, so again, just review what I did. I start with the first one, big a, big b, big a, little b, and then little a, big b, little a, little b. Now, I want you to practice that on these, and let's see how we do. So practice that, pause the video, come back, try it for the other ones. Ready? Let's see, how do we do? Check your work, you can pause the video, but that's it. That's to figure out uh, gamete genotypes from one gene, and here, how many genes? Two genes. So that's how you do that.